Hello friends, welcome to MS Technologies. I'm going to start new online batch for Python and Django. The batch will start from 1st June 2020. Timing 7 a.m. to 8.30 a.m. IST. It is complete online batch. You people can able to attend from any location. I will share the URL daily basis. You guys connect to the classes through that URL. Course content. So in this batch, I'm going to cover Python. Here I'm, I'm going to cover both core and advanced Pythons. After that, I'm going to cover one framework, which is Django framework. If you guys want to develop any Python based web application compulsory, you guys should know at least one framework. Here I'm going to cover that framework is Django framework. We have so many other frameworks also available in market. So like Django, Flask, Bottle, like that. So many other frameworks also available. Compare with all other frameworks. Django is more powerful to develop a web applications. Why? Because Django framework is specially designed for web applications development. So that's why for developing any web application, whatever the commonly required things are there, all those things you will get by default along with the Django software. As a developer, if we have to write only 30 to 40 percent of the coding only remaining 60 to 70 percent you will get along with this Django software so that's why Django framework became more powerful compared with other Python related frameworks after completing this Python and Django I will give one real-time project you guys have to do that project I will give the support how to do that project and all the, the required support I will provide, you guys have to do that project from scratch to the end. While doing this project, here you guys require some front-end technologies also, like HTML, CSS, Bootstrap, JavaScript, all these front-end technologies also required here. Here, I will provide the basic idea on all these front-end technologies also. I want to give complete course but here, to complete this project, how much front-end technologies are required, up to that level, I will provide the support. So next, one more point. Every 10 days or one week, every one week or 10 days, I will conduct some mock interviews. So then you guys also can able to understand where you guys are in. Right? How much you guys have to put effort. All the things sir, you guys can able to understand if you guys give any mock interview kind of thing. Now, we'll see what syllabus I'm going to cover in Python and Django. Coming to Python, here around 35 topics I'm going to talk. First one, introduction. In this introduction part, I'm going to explain about what is Python, why Python, by using Python, what type of applications we can develop, who introduced Python, all these things I will talk in introduction part. Next, fundamentals of Python. In this, uh, I'm going to talk about what are the different, what are the different reserved keywords are available inside Python. What is identifier? If you want to create any identifier, what rules we have to follow? What are the different flavors of Python is available? And what are the different versions are available in Python? Everything I will talk and the futures of Python. What features are there? What limitations are there in Python? And all the things I will go to, I'm going to talk in fundamentals of Python. Next one is how to develop a first Python application. Here I'm going to show the how to write the code, how to develop first Python application. Sample hello world kind of application. I'm going to show it here. Next data types. In Python, around we have 14 to 15 data types are available. Some data types are mutable data types and some data types are immutable data types. With the examples, I'm going to discuss, I'm going to discuss in this data types. Next, input functions. 
if you want to read dynamic data from the keyboard we have to use input function how to use that input function what is the type of data it written input function by default what type of data it will return if you want to convert one type to other type what are the inbuilt typecasting functions are available all the things uh, i will discuss in input functions topic next output functions here how what are the different ways we have to do you to use that output function i will discuss it here so next command line arguments at the time of program execution if you want to pass any arguments how we can able to pass those arguments i'm going to discuss it here and the next all command line arguments are stored in which variable and what is the type of that variable and where that variable is available for this which module we have to import all these things i am going to talk in command line arguments next topic operators i am going to discuss in operators around six operators i am going to talk right here arithmetic operators relational operators logical operators bitwise operators assignment operators and special operators right each and everything with the examples we will discuss it here so next one is a conditional statements right here how many ways we can write conditional statements if condition if else condition if elif condition if elif else condition all these things with examples we'll discuss it here next one is looping statements here we have two types of loops we have one is a for loop and other one is a while loop do while is not available in python we have only for loop and while loop we'll discuss for and while in detail here next one is a transfer statements transfer statements here break continue pass right these are the transfer statements we have that right? we'll discuss about those statements clearly at here next very very important one is the string data type right very very most important topic in interview room also string data type here we are going to see so many programs in strings related to strings we are going to discuss so many examples so many programs we are going to see almost all interview programs almost all interview programs related to strings that right? we'll discuss at here next we are going to next topic we are going to talk about data structures here we are going to talk four data structures one is list data structure tuple data structure set data structure and the dictionary data structures with the functions what functions are available with the examples each and every data structure will discuss very clearly at here so next one now packages what is a package what the package contains and all the things we will discuss it here next functions how to write the function what are the predefined functions we have if you want to write a user defined function how to write user defined functions right how to pass the arguments to user defined function and what is anonymous function what is the lambda function where we will use those lambda functions and all the things with the examples we will discuss it so next uh, we have some more advanced functions which are decorator functions and generator functions also we will discuss it here next uh, modules topic suppose if you want to import any module in your program how to import that module suppose if you want to import any member from this module how to import that particular member how to import and then next we'll see some example modules like math module what are the functions are available inside math module and uh, some example programs on that math module after that uh, random module what are the inbuilt functions are available inside random module and some examples related to that random module also we'll discuss it here next a very very important topic in python is oops so this is one of the major topic one of the lengthy topic in entire this python course in entire this python course this is one of the major and lengthy topic we are going to discuss it here which is nothing but oops topic here what i am going to discuss is what is a class what is object how to define the class how to create the object what are the different types of inheritances we have and how to how to uh, this one mro algorithm also we are going to discuss it here mro algorithm easier relationship has a relationship difference between easier and has a relationship next compositions aggregations so many things so many things we have to discuss in oops module 
right so next one i'm going to talk about uh, abstract methods abstract classes and interfaces after that uh, i'm going to talk about exception handling here if any exception is raised how to handle that exception by using try except blocks and how to use a finally block inside a try block what code we have to write inside the except block what code we have to write inside finally block what code we have to write and here we can use else block also at here and if you go for java there we don't have else block but in python right along with that try except blocks we can use else block also what code we have to write inside else block suppose if you want to define and raise your customized exceptions how we can able to define and raise customized exception that thing also we will discuss clearly at here so next one is a multi threading right here what is multi threading what is multi processing how many ways we can able to create the thread objects and uh, what is a synchronization how to implement a synchronization when we will go for synchronization how two threads will communicate each other how many ways we can able to implement that and the next what is a demon thread and all the things and all the things that we will discuss in detail about multi threading it here so next up file handling here if you want to store the information inside files how we can able to store for that how to create the file right how to create a text file what are the different modes are available inside a text file next how to create binary files what are the different modes are available inside binary files and related to some directories right how to create directory how to create sub directory and all the things we will discuss it here next one is regular expressions very very important topic is regular expression here we can able to define define our regular expression patterns right here for mobile number verification for mobile number validation how to write the regular expression pattern for email id validation how to write the regular expression pattern for uh, uh, vehicle number registration how to write the regular expression pattern all the things what are the predefined functions are available and everything each and everything will discuss in detail uh, in regular expressions so next one is a uh, web scrapping next one is web scrapping by using web scrapping we can grab the data from any online application we can grab the data any from any online application after collecting the data i want to validate that collected data i want to validate that collected data by using regular expression patterns now here what we are doing by using web scrapping we are grabbing some data from online application next i want to validate that data by using regular expression patterns how to do that all the things we'll see with the programs next assertions how to write how to write the assert statement here we can write assert statement in two ways simple version and augmented versions right how to write assert statements and all the things we'll discuss it here next python logging here if you want to store any log information suppose uh, uh, your application your application is running in your system then we can able to know where where error is coming and everything right it will whenever we run application uh, if there is any issue that the details we can able to see in the console we can able to see the details on console suppose your application is in production environment not in your local environment so we can't able to see that uh, production environment issues directly right so for that right, we can maintain some log files inside that log file we can able to see where that application is failed right in request processing where it is failed everything we can able to see inside that log file how to create that log file and all the things we'll discuss it here so next topic is pdbc python database connectivity here i'm going to show how to connect with the oracle database how to connect with the mysql database and how to create the tables how to create the data inside the database by using python program and how to fetch the data and how to update the data how to delete the data all these operations we are going to do by using python programs only here two databases we are going to use one is oracle database and other one is mysql database both the things i am going to explain it here right so if if i miss anything i will add some more things also in the middle so minimum these are the topics i am going to talk in python see around the 35 topics i am going to discuss in python here everything i will go in practical oriented only practical way only i will explain 
lot of programs we are going to practice in the entire python course around 250 to 250 programs we will do right see how much uh, hands on experience you guys will get on programming i will do i will give the homeworks we will see some pattern program kind of things everything will see it here right after completing this python course right we'll move into zango we'll move into move into zango in zango what we are going to do in zango what we are going to discuss in zango first i'm going to talk about introduction of web development if you want to develop any web application what is web application if you want to develop any web application mainly what are the different components are available inside web application front end back end if you want to develop a front end part what technologies we require if you want to develop back end what technologies we require everything we'll discuss uh, in introduction part so next one is a uh, introduction about zango zango who introduced zango when zango is came what are the advantages of zango right all the things all the things we'll discuss in a uh, zango introduction part. next uh, id is if you want to develop uh, any web application some id must be required here suppose if you go with, if you go for python we can write python application in a notepad as well notepad plus plus also id is not required for that but coming to web application compulsory we required some ides like pycharm atom visual studio these kind of ids must be required here here i am going to show how to install those ides how to create virtual environment inside those ides and everything i will discuss it here so next up first web application development by using django i will discuss after that mvt architecture mvt architecture see if you go for java java follows what mvc architecture model view controller architecture but coming to python coming to django it won't follow mvc architecture it follows mvt architecture model view template architecture it follows here i'm going to explain how that mvt architecture look like so how the flow will go and everything i will talk it here so next i'm going to discuss about the views views topic here inside views we have to write entire business logic inside views only how to create here views we can write in two ways either by using functions or by using class what is the difference between functions and class based views and functional based views how to create a view function and everything i will talk it here. so next uh, templates inside templates we have to write a presentation logic here inside template we have to write presentation logic means html files we have to write uh, inside this uh, templates next uh, static files how to work with uh, css images javascript and all the things we'll discuss at the static files concept next one is django forms if you want to create any sign up page if you want to create any login page for that we have to go with this django forms next if you want to store that sign up page information inside the models inside the database if you want to store a login page information inside the database then we have to go with this django model forms next template inheritance suppose uh, if you open any web application suppose any website if you guys are open you guys can able to see one nav bar that nav bar will come on each and every page in that uh, website suppose assume in that website total 10 pages are there in each and every page you can able to see that nav bar here also my requirement i want to i want to see that nav bar in each and every page at that time what we have to do we have to write that nav bar logic inside each and every html page instead of writing like that what i am going to do that nav bar logic and whatever the required css links and javascript links all the things i will take inside a parent.html file remaining all html files will extend that parent.html file in that case automatically that nav bar logic css links javascript related things all the things will be inherited to parent to child automatically for that we have to go with this uh, template inheritance next topic we are going to talk about template filters template filters here i'm fetching the data from database i want to display in a different ways that data suppose i want to display in capital letters i want to display in a uh, small letters i want to trim i want to apply different different uh, different different uh, functionalities on the data then by using the uh, template filters we can do that so next one is a uh, session management 
here if the client and the server both wants to communicate each other how they can able to communicate by using http protocol they can able to communicate each other but here http protocol is a stateless protocol means uh, it can't able to remember previous request information it can able to remember only current request information only but in our web applications uh, compulsory the server should remember previous request information also how it can able to remember for that uh, here i am going to talk about uh, session management with cookies and uh, session management with the uh, django session api these are two things i am going to talk at here session management with cookies and session management with django session api next user authentication and authorization right suppose if you want to for your web application right you want to create a sign up form sign up login log out all these things you have to provide right so for that we can able to use this authentication and authorization here what is authentication what is authorization authentication means what user validity user user is a correct user or not we are checking authorization means what that person have the permissions or not that persons have the permission to access particular page or not so that thing is nothing but authorization authentication means user validity user is correct user or not we are checking authorization means permissions next one is a class based reviews class based reviews reviews we can implement in two ways one is the functional based reviews second one is class based reviews class based reviews are came in django 1.3 version here i am going to talk about the class based reviews next crud operations crud means create retrieve update date delete data creation data retrieve data update data delete this crud operations by using functional based reviews next crud operations by using class based reviews also i am going to talk next one is django orm object relational mapping very very important topic right here we are going to talk a lot of this so many field lookups are available like filter uh, greater than the underscore underscore greater than underscore underscore greater than are equal to underscore underscore less than underscore underscore less than are equal to like that so many field lookups are there i am going to talk each and everything after that uh, how to write r queries how to write and queries how to write union queries how to write not queries and after that uh, sorting techniques how to do the crud operations by using django orm all these things i will talk at here so next one is a uh, model inheritance concepts django model inheritance concepts how we have template inheritance the same way here model inheritance concepts also available here what i am going to talk here mainly we are going to talk about four things one is abstract base class model inheritance next one is a multi table inheritance next one is proxy inheritance next one is multiple inheritance all the things i am going to talk at here next one is django middleware very very important topic for security purposes we are going to use this middleware concept Right. by default uh, you will get some middleware uh, through django software right apart those middleware uh, based on our requirement uh, we can able to create our own middleware classes also how to create our own middle clear middleware classes for that what are the mandatory methods we have to take like init method and call method and whatever the optional methods are available inside middleware classes all the things we'll discuss with the examples very clearly so next one after completing that i want to deploy the application in live environment here we have python anywhere and uh, digital ocean so many things are there so many things are there here i'm going to show how to deploy how to deploy the application inside live environment right this is the django syllabus around 22 to 25 topics i'm going to talk in uh, django here one more thing you guys want to remember here for each topic in django suppose today i am today i will discuss views at here right so i will give some homework also on that views topic you guys have to complete that homework project tomorrow if i complete templates on views and template i will give one more project to do the homework and you guys have to complete next day i will give one project for uh, template views and models and you guys have to complete that project and so like that daily i will give uh, homework projects also for practicing and by the end of django course uh, you guys should complete at least 15 to 20 projects like that after completing django course i will give one real time project also 
right? If you do like that, what it will happen? You guys will get more confidence on the project. In interview, if they ask any question related project, if they ask any question related to Django, you guys should be in a position to tell each and every, to give the clear explanation, explanation about all these things. All right. So here, what I will do, I will create some WhatsApp group for each and every batch, each and every batch. So you guys have any doubts, you guys have any issues at the time of practicing. Right, you guys can able to post uh, your doubts and issues inside the WhatsApp group. Uh, immediately, I will respond for those uh, right uh, messages. Sir. Next, if anyone is attended for the interviews, right, those people will post the questions in that uh, group only. In that group, they will post the questions also. Right, the total duration for this course, the total duration for course is uh, around two months, fifteen days. Sir. It will take uh, it will take two months max. I will try to complete two to two months, ten days. Sir. Two months to two months, ten days it will take. Around sixty to seventy days it will take. The duration of the course is sixty to seventy days. All right. If you guys are interested to join this course, right here. So these are the my contact details: MS Technologies zero eight two four at the rate gmail dot com, and this is my WhatsApp number nine five three eight five three five two seven. Right, so you guys can able to contact to these details for fees, that is fees details and any other information about the course. You guys can able to contact to this number. Okay, thank you guys. Thank you very much.